this week, we are going to talk about um, entrepreneur and the relationship with um, inventor. Um, why is entrepreneur so important? We're just a uh, ordinary uh, designer or inventor or just having ideas and try to develop idea and then lies in the mouth. Why entrepreneur is so important? Of course, everybody teaching you how the uh, getting a licensing deal, getting a uh, 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 idea to just uh, apply for a PPA, which is patent, uh, which is a, a provisional patent application. Wow, um, it's um, uh, very easy. You got idea, I'm going to teach you how to get PPA. I'm going to teach you how to do the licensing. You will make a fortune and you will be millionaire. Those are nonsense. Million dollar don't come just because you are inventor. Million dollar will not come just because you uh, just simply license a little uh, product and then rely on a little, uh, how do I describe, a little um, royalty to make you a millionaire. That's a nonsense. Those are not necessarily the truth. Um, I'm telling you the most important thing is making the multi-million marry the spirit and the exercise and running a entrepreneurship along and with your own invention. This is very important. Later on, you say, you know what? I am not really good in terms of running entrepreneur, but I have this entrepreneurship, a mini entrepreneurship running. Later on, you say, you know what? I can sell the whole thing. I can sell the uh, product. I can sell the concept. I can even sell the company. Why people pay attention to buy your company? Because you have a success story you have a success story successful story to talk about because you based on your uh, entrepreneurship you already uh, prove product in sold whether it's sold online amazon or whether it's sold into the store a uh, brick and mortar store walmart target and also a uh, coast Walgreen, whatever the uh, local store you can reach out. That is very, very important. Without sales number, you, you don't people don't even care to negotiate, not even care to even talk to you about licensing, uh, talk about partnership, talk about investment. None of this will happen without your approval of success. But how do you get a proof of success? Then you need to run entrepreneurship. You need to use a little money or no money to run a business, to launch the sales in order for you to have the sales approval. So that is very important. So we talk about inventor and entrepreneurship. Give me a second. I'm going to get a pen to write. This already done. Inventor and entrepreneur we keep talking about this pre previously this we need to call we need inventor we need wow then what's 
difference in between these two. After you figure out what this between innovation and invent invention, and then you know the relationship of entrepreneur and inventors. It is great to know the relationship about them. I think there's a light reflection, so I move a little bit, people can see. Entrepreneur with innovation, inventor with inventions. It is great. It is totally awesome. It is important to talk about this. I am go I'm going to call one of my students. Uh, his name is uh, Ryan Gray. Um, I think we need him to, to be on just because he said he want to be in, uh, he want to be in, uh, 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 to help me to do the testing with this uh, first time online uh, streaming uh, sem seminar, but he's not on, something happened to him, I don't know, but we need to call him. But at the same time, we shouldn't be worried about just continue for our conversation and coaching and seminar. Hey, uh, uh, Ryan, are you in the uh, seminar? No, I'm trying to connect right now, I'm having issues. Uh, as as all right, please do, please do so. We are already online, and Kelvin's already watching it right now. Gotcha. All right. Yeah, I'm trying to get on. So get on. If you have a problem, call uh, Kelvin or call uh, James to help you out. Sounds good. All yeah. right, thank you. So let's talk about entrepreneur, and let's talk about innovation. It's a rather important to be innovative as entrepreneur. Entrepreneur is running a business. It's a start your own business. If you don't have invention, you don't have, you're not inventor, now what? First option, you can go to some ideas or pattern search or uh, talk to get to know some inventor or go to idea to million website to look at our showcase there's some uh, inventor posting their idea in the site if it, if the product is what you're looking for great then we you, you, can, you can contact inventor to get contract, to get licensing agreement. But that's one, that's one area. Entrepreneur work with inventor. Inventors. This is one. Two, we should also be innovative. What do you mean by innovative? If you're not innovative in today's business, you can't even start your own business. All the old format, it doesn't work. Look at Disney. In order for Disney to survive, they need to do the uh, merger. Uh, they need to buy Marvel, they need to buy George Lucas, um, Star Wars, they need to buy Hulu in order for them to do the streaming of Disney's properties. They need the previous um, cassette selling, DVD selling, it's no longer um, the existing business. So they, they're not technology company, but they got enough um, they're a public company, they got enough capital can work with, so they buy Hulu. Hulu is the uh, company doing the streaming, entertainment property, online streaming. That is their sales channel. That is their basic fundamental upgrade from selling DVD 
in uh, Walmart, Best Buy, Target. Now they even able to get to uh, Netflix or um, Amazon sell their product to stream their product. But guess what? They they're not only doing this. They even buy a streaming service Hulu to compete with Amazon, compete with Google, compete with Netflix. So that is called innovative business management. That's called innovative. Do they need to buy patent whatever? If if there's a necessary, you do because if you're technology company working with invent inventors inevitable there's a lot of a uh, uh, company have an inventor relationship department and work with handfuls of inventor so that's the situation here uh, then the be innovative To entrepreneur, if you don't have an innovative way to run your business, just even you have a new invent new invention, if you don't have an innovative way to run the business, you still have a problem. It's still not update enough to keep your business running. So you need both. Entrepreneur need to have working with inventor and with innovative ways to run your business. Or well, if that is happening, what about inventors? Inventor also need to do this too. Your inventor, obviously, you have your idea, you want to sell your idea. But also, you need to have an innovative way to run business. Without an innova innovative way to run business, how can you sell your product? Before, when I launched my automotive sunshade, the pop-up sunshade, I have to rely on swap me, which is the uh, Pasadena Rose Bowl swap me to launch sales of the product. Nowadays, there's an, another high tech swap me, online swap me. They call Amazon, they call Shopify, they call WooCommerce. You name it, there's a, so many different platforms, and also there is. Wayfair, Walmart.com, Target.com, all this you can launch to test your product. That is a core innovative way to run a business to launch a new product. Obviously, you still can go to local swap meet to uh, deal with face-to-face -face cons consumers to get feedback. That's awesome. But the most importantly, take it online. So that is an innovative way to test product. Use the online uh, business concept, e-commerce concept. Is this really new? No. People are already running it. And when I start my business, swap me already exists more than 20, 30 years. So just take a baby step, use online to test your product, test your business method, and test your services. So that is both entrepreneur and inventor need to have innovative way and also plus a invention. And this is one plus two. Sounds very easy, but what is the best method of invention? What is the best invention to fit the best innovative 
formula, an innovative format to run the business. Lots of entrepreneurs, especially the college uh, people, I went to uh, several schools. Uh, I dealt with uh, people from Stanford. I dealt with people from UCLA and UC Irvine and Cal State Fullerton. I talk, I've been fortunate to talk to those students, able to give a lecture and coaching uh, them to be a inventor at the same time being entrepreneur. Guess what? Most of people they believe as long as I I I've been innovative and I can run any business. Products, nothing. No. Products are king. The inventor, the invention, if it's a related product, that is a new freaking king. You need to raise them up. You need to take care of it with the innovative way to take care of the kingdom. Very, very important. It is absolutely no other, it's absolutely the only way. This is absolute ultimate way to launch new business within today's economy. Um, so don't be uh, some of students don't be some of my students, they believe, oh, as long as I got something uh, innovative, I got internet channel, I got something uh, uh, in YouTube, I got something in uh, TikTok, whatever, the Instagram, the world, and Facebook, then I can run business. Nonsense. Nonsense. Don't spend or waste your money without good invention. Inventions. <laughs> now become the invention. With good invention as a product or as a service. And then with good or innovate, innovative method, you run your business. That is what the difference between only a inventor with innovative mind or only the um, inventor with invention but don't know what to do. Invent Inventor can use this formula. It's entrepreneur plus inventor run a business. Form a company. Nowadays, the most popular thing is LLC. Form them up. And then Use the LLC to run your licensing program, to develop your product. Eventually, use the LLC to run the business. LLC, obviously, you have your name. You need to have a trade name and domain name cover your LLC. You also need to use a trade name and domain name also cover your product. Still use trade name. And domain name. Make sure. Uh, in my accelerator program, idea to million accelerator program, I over, over, over emphasize to form an LLC to protect yourself. Yes, you create your invention. Yes, 
you got your uh, pattern. If I were you, I would even consider, or I recommend, assign your pattern to the LLC you form. Then, whatever the expense you use for apply for pattern, apply for trademark, apply for LLC, whatever, you can have a tax deduction. If later on you have the whole product running, you need to have business license. But, oh no, business insurance. I'm sorry. To cover your business and also to cover your product. To cover, cover. Your business, your product. That's a must. I told everybody, I um, um, have a very, very sad story um, to tell everybody, but hear me out. Uh, early or mid 90, I got a lawsuit launched from a woman in the Midwest. Claim she lost her eyesight because she used our pop up automotive sunshade. So the automotive sunshade pop up with a spring loop damaged her eyesight. She filed a lawsuit 4.6 4 million, 4.7, I'm sorry, 4.7 million lawsuit. So I have to, luckily I bought insurance from Harvard. Harvard is the insurance uh, company I bought insurance for. But I have to use my lawyer to defend first until I spend $60,000 and then the insurance kicking in. Then the insurance exchange different lawyer and Along with my lawyer team, my legal team formed together to deal with the uh, plaintiff, which is the woman, and also woman hire the expert uh, witness as a doctor, right? A bunch of uh, very thick, four inches thick of examination, testimonial about her, she lost her eyesight. After three and three years and two months, um, the insurance designed to pay that woman um, with three approximately three million dollars, actually three point one. Um, so document being prepared, um, underwriter had all the settlement, everything reviewed, and guess what? I receive a FedEx box, legal document. Boom. I got the, uh, after I received the document, I received a phone call from my legal team. Brian, you need to sign this uh, document. I, I assume you already received from FedEx. And please review and sign it. I said, I will. But that was a Friday, so I said I will take care of them during the weekend when um, I'm not too busy and I will review the document. So Sunday, I spent a whole day to read documents. A box of that thick of the paper documents. Everything's a legal size. And I reviewed it and I said, you know what? I don't understand most of them. But I, all I need to say to myself, thank God. 
I pay for the insurance. Wow. So I would take my pen ready to sign. Actually, I did sign it. So I said, wow, that lucky woman or unlucky woman. I'm so sorry. My product really hurt people. And whatever this disaster, I'm just glad I had insurance coverage. That is very important. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're running your business, don't take it like insurance is most important because in this country, legal battle can really ruin whatever the business you're in or whatever the business you established. Very, very, very unfortunate. But this country also have a very good business system we can take advantage of uh, as well. So after I review, the, the situation is rather funny. After I review that, pay attention to me. Yes, I thank God I bought the insurance. Thank you for the insurance system runs. But before the insurance decide to pay, I have to hire a lawyer to sue the insurance to make sure they pay because they deny every uh, coverage to begin with. That's a company called Hoffer. That's besides the point. The most important point is, I said, wow, let me review the doctor's um, document. If doctor has a so-called um, examination and also testimonial report. So I go to flip, 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 flip. I say, oh, what's the reason to uh, hurt the eye, eyesight? So I take a look. The reason indicated the, the woman lost her eyesight because the wood chip. Wood chip! I said, oh, okay, wood chip. I said, wait a second. After I flip a couple of pages, I said, wood chip, do I have a wood chip inside of pop of sunshade? No. The answer is no. I don't have a material made by the wood inside pop of sunshade. Wow. I say, is this for real? More than 11 lawyers with all the legal team the plaintiff, the defendants, and the insurance, and the insurance uh, uh, underwriters, doctors, wow, paralegals. No one caught this. Am I? And are this for real? Am I really able to catch all these as a mistake? I don't believe at the beginning, but ultimately I launch a phone call, leave a phone message in my lawyer's cell phone, and then ask the lawyer, call me to discuss what is happening with this document. Shall I send them out? Shall I talk about before I send out? Just because I caught something. So next day, which is Monday, I was able to talk to the lawyer and the lawyer said, you know what, Brian, no need to send your signature. I will review, I'll get back to you. Sure enough, within the same week, I got a phone call and I was told by, the, by my lawyer and the whole litigation being reviewed by both sides, lawyer. Sure enough, two weeks later, I would say three weeks later, I got a phone call from my lawyer. The case settled. I say, how? They settled with $20,000. That was a fraud. 
the insurance. I say, are you going to sue that woman? The insurance say, we are not in the litigation business. Suing the lawyer, we need to spend legal fee. We just let go. We should be, you should be very glad we're not raising the premium of you for next year and the thing settled. Wow. Wow, for real? That's an insurance coverage story for you. The woman is fraud. The woman sued us for coverage with her being not careful, lost her eyesight with wood chip material. It's not from the pop up sunshade. But with all these running around, first of all, I'm glad there's an insurance system. Second, I do glad I, I'm glad I am able to coach by my other lawyer to uh, launch a lawsuit to sue the insurance company, force them to do the coverage. Second of all, it's very disappointing by knowing uh, knowing people who sue any company or any product in the market for money and, and being a, a really, a, this is a federal, federal felony. Just um, let you know, other people sue you because because it's not your fault, because the greed. Now that is called coverage. But let's go back to innovation. Innovative. If you're, you have a product, you don't decide to sell to the brick and mortar, what can you do? Is a Shopify work for you? Is a WooCommerce work for you? Or is Amazon work for you? Let me tell you, most of my conversation with people, it is very hard to make money from Amazon. Amazon charging people a lot of different percentage, a lot of different service, lots of different uh, handling fees. Most of e-commerce people, they don't make that much money. They've been very busy shipping product from Amazon to, to the customers. Do they really make that much money? No. Amazon have two systems, one called Vendor Central, one called Solar Central. Learn from that. Before you dive in, learn how they charge you how they charge you for inventory, for handling. Enormous. So that is something people need to be careful. But how can you be innovative? Before people say, oh, I got items. I can buy TV ad. I can do whatever, promote. Promote my product. So therefore, people will go to Walmart, Target, to see their brand, see the, uh, to see the, the, the product we promote, people will buy. Those days are long gone, long gone. Why? Kids or people don't watch TV anymore. They may watch YouTube. They may even watch social media. They may even watch in Instagram more than watch TV, more than watch any episode. So now, uh, how can the merchants, how can the company like you, like the big company, big manufacturer to promote the product? Very difficult, very different now. Now they, so therefore, it, it is inevitable for you to find a innovative solution to promote your product. Can you use Instagram? Can you use the influencer, the world, in the 
social media platform to promote your idea, promote your company, promote your services. That is the challenge. Inevitable, we need to find innovative world. So that's what I'm talking about in this first half an hour. We take five minutes break, we'll come back. But the live streaming is still here. People, go ahead, take a lead, take a drink, take whatever. We will regroup in five minutes. Right now is uh, 7.05. 7.10 will be back. Thank you for watching. All right. So we talk about, we already talked about why the, uh, why it's so important with the innovative concept with the inventors or with the inventions. Nowadays, you can only, you cannot rely on only invention to make business. You know that you can only rely on one uh, so-called innovative method for entrepreneur to make business. We need to get married. We need to get engaged with great invention and great innovative method of running entrepreneur. Both hand in hand. I guarantee you, um, any product or any method you try to run into to uh, to try to run for your own business people already thought about it's how you use all this information all this method put together to be little more than uh suitable more suitable for you to run your business wow it's too much information, too much going on. <laughs> uh, it is, it is. Uh, internet uh, really enhance our life, but also disrupt a lot of good business format, running very smooth in the traditional way. We schooled. <laughs> As an inventor, uh, we are in, in this stage, appear to be in a very disadvantaged uh, situation. It's very, uh, in a lot of previous uh, business environment, business uh, method, we can take advantage from being interrupted, being disrupted. Disrupt, disrupt is really, really being, and school out on being damaged. Being replaced by the internet is really the internet, the, the method of the internet disrupt the traditional uh, method. But is the, re, is the new method really make money? No. It still remains to be seen. Most new way they disrupt the old business, but they did not make money. So they actually hurt the old way to make money, but then they spend too much time, uh, that much time and that much energy, that much money, investment to build something new, ruin the traditional way, but they cannot prove they're making money. That is a problem. And obviously there's a Facebook, the world, Google, the world making money, but only a handful. But most of traditional business being disrupted. For example, Amazon. They disrupt a lot of retail brick mortar business. But is Amazon making money? Then they have to be creative, be innovative, running a Amazon uh, web service. called AWS to re, rebuild, reorganize themselves to launch new business in order for people to view them as a technology company in order to keep the price up in the stock market. 
Then they go to develop a so-called Alexa, Amazon Echo, all these new technology product to build another division, to build up the business. The business to begin with is just e-commerce. Yes, you heard Walmart, all right. You heard Toys R Us. You heard Amazon. You heard a lot of the department store, and you heard everybody. Do you really make money, Amazon? No. So you go back to service, uh, uh, a, a, a go to service to reinvent itself. That's great. And then you go to build technology product with the Echo, with Alexa, it becomes a search engine located in your own house. That is genius. And with the uh, ring, uh, with the uh, smart home type facility, that's genius. That's a product. That's no longer a e-commerce platform. how we can use today's technology today is today's business environment to be a successful inventor successful innovator to make money not just building technologies building technology is fun I've been spending shitloads of money, waste of lots of money to building lots of fun product, which doesn't generate pro uh, much money. Whether it's in toy area, whether it's in other area, I'm still challenging myself. Why the hell I'm doing, I was doing that? Because I have fear. The fear is if I'm not in the technology, I may be obsolete. But just because of fear, just do not want to be obsolete, just do not just because we want to go to technology, that means we may um, we are able to make money. Same to everybody. Everybody as my audience right now have to understand technology doesn't mean profit. Technology most of the time means waste of waste of money and Waste of lots of investment. So we have to be very careful. I I am the one who loves technology. I, I'm the one believing in technology, but I also I'm the one got lots of lots of money in technologies. <laughs> now we after we talk about invention, after we talk about entrepreneur. Now what, what now? What entrepreneur can, can do? Let's talk about entrepreneur again. Without entrepreneur, you can't make much money. Even your inventor try to license out your property, license out your invention. That's already a little part of entrepreneur and entrepreneurship you run into it. That's called business. Um, so therefore entrepreneur it's really broad if you want to talk about the term. So most of the time we talk about invention. That's all we talk about the last half an hour. Now in business, what do we do? If you have a product, you go to um, manufacturing and try to sell by itself before you find license C. Guess what? You might as well just run test a little bit. So you need to go to OEM. What's OEM? OEM is 
original equipment manufacturer. Where they are? They are in the they are in the US. They're in China. Mostly they're in China because lots of manufacturers move to China because our country in the US uh, try to eliminate the production facility in order to keep nice living environment for us. So we move up and meanwhile our labor cost, cost of living is very high, no longer able to uh, compete with other countries. So China, for the past 40 years, they developed massive factory facility. They are the powerhouse of world uh, largest powerhouse for consumer product, for B2B product. So that's OEM. You go to China or you go to the US, some domestic manufacturer to manufacture, to build your product. That's called OEM. And also there is another uh, white label Why label business practice also getting very popular? If you have an idea, if you have business method, why label is also available. And then you go to you go to also looking for private label. We talk about later on, or continue to talk about. And then, after white label, after whatever, you can do franchise. And then you can do all we call slicing. After you make sure all these being executed, exercised, if a product proves itself, it's not that difficult to do licensing. A lot more easy. So, really, uh, am I really made out as a business person, as an entrepreneur? Shit, we have to deal with employee, investment, insurance, and organization, management, H, like, uh, HR, and logistic, and fulfillments, oh, manufacturing, production, raw material, costing, accounting, banking, all this is running business. Is that really worth it? Let me tell you. A young woman, only 20, less than 21 years old. Her name is Kylie Jenner. I think very, everybody uh, is familiar with this name. She run a $1 billion. She ran a $1 billion business by doing white label, white label for her own cosmetic product line. Before this Kylie cosmetic company, she was making money from being a model, running a fashion company, selling fashions, making a very, very, very good income, decent income. But after she launched a white label, business, working with a lab and manufacturer in Oxnard, California, design and produce and fulfill, do the fulfillment, take care of all the orders online from her tidy cosmetic store online, only online, under the power of Shopify. She's able to grow the business 
from very, very little in 2015. Only 1,500 pieces being sold to the end of 2019, near or over $1 billion sales. Same time, she sold her company 51% to gain six, $600 million cash. My label. I have to give a credit to her mother, uh, Christina, but doesn't matter. She worked her ass off building her own brand, working with designers, doing all the cosmetic product. Choose cosmetic product. Always on the camera, always posting her own YouTube, Facebook, Instagram product, uh, Instagram uh, posting to generate the popularity of her and her product. That is called innovative method. That is called innovative entrepreneurship. Utilize herself as a popular social media influencer to run her own brand. Kylie Cosmetic. Kylie Cosmetic is very successful, new innovation of running entrepreneur. That she has a product in the innovative product or invention. No, she doesn't have so-called patented invention of the product. But I was told that that's she, her lips, her lip kits, after you put them on the lip, the lip of the user will be a little bit puffy, puff up. Hey, that's unique. That really match her lip. People like to have Kylie's lip. So therefore, by putting on, look like puff up. That's unique. That is called innovative product line. That's innovative king. Product is king. Use white label. He does not own any facility, other than the equipment or workers to run the business. In her office, seven people full-time, five people part-time, that's all. But the factory, he white label contract out to called Seat Beauty. The last name of the owner called uh, I think call uh, Nelson, John Nelson, and his wife's running the business. They're very good. They're running the brand for Kylie Jenner now and also for Kim Kardashian, KKW, and other brands they have. This company is genius too. They own the lab of do, uh, getting FDA approval, whatever design, cosmetic product. But they also form a company, have their own brand called C Beauty. At the same time, they're doing white label to support the bigger brand like Kylie Jenner, like Kim Kardashian. So that is white label. OEMs are very easy. You design a product, say, hey, factory, I want to make this, and, and I have a brand, I have company, I want to, I want you to make this product within your original equipment. I don't need to invest equipment or maybe even modify little equipment to build my need. So 
make hundred thousand pieces or a million pieces per year for me, then I take care of myself. I will sell to uh, Amazon. I will sell to Walmart. I will sell to Target. I will sell to a lot of retailers in Europe or distributor in Europe. Then I take care of myself. You just use original manufacturer to original manufacturer equipment or facility to manufacture for. And then ODM means original design manufacturer. So they even involve design to improve your concept, improve your product. So ODM is happening more and more in China now just because they are more understand the, the, the facility, understand the market, understand the, um, the technology. So it can help you to design better product within their facility. So that is what OEM, ODM, des designer, inventor, entrepreneur can take advantage from doing this. Also entrepreneur, inventor, looking the opportunity of white label. I just talked about white label. White label is very popular now. Take advantage, use them. Now private label, private label there's a lot of different things. Today, most popular private label, I think everybody know, is from Costco called, um, called Kirtland Signature. You see a catch up in Kirtland Signature. You've been, you've seen lots of good label of dishwash uh, soap and also um, drinking water, bottle of water, canned, canned food, and also a some product, a consumer product under the name Kirtland Signature. Private label. If you have a product, you use OEM to build your product under your brand name. You're very successful, you're selling to US retailers. Let's just say Costco. So Costco, they're selling very well. So now one day the buyer say, you know what? Brian, do me a favor. I don't want your brand anymore in my store. I want to buy from you, but you build a brand under Costco Kirkland signature. I like to do business with you this way. You say, okay, no problem. Why? If I don't make my product under Kirkland signature, Somebody will. Even you have a patent, even even your trademark. So what? Let me tell you. Warren Buffett invest a company called Crap Craft Food. Craft Food own a lot of good brand. Perfect example is the ketchup. High end ketchup. Guess what? You don't see Heinz ketchup in Costco. You see Kirtland signature. I guarantee you that is the factory. Make Heinz to make that brand for Costco. Why? Why everybody doing private brand in, in retail? Target doing shitloads of private label. Walmart doing shitloads of private label in food, in consumer product. Why? The reason being is people have this goddamn smartphone. They go to Walmart, they go to Costco, they go to Target. They see a product. Oh, okay, I like this. They go to, they went on Amazon to check the price. So, and Amazon, also Amazon have 
matching price game, whatever. So therefore, the Walmart target became to a showroom of Amazon product. Guess what? Now they change in strategy. If it's a good seller, it's a good product, use my own brand. In summer, in for the pool, for the outdoor uh, consumer product, Walmart use Play Day. You were never able to find Play Day in Amazon, nor than any online uh, retailers. So they protect their price point, protect their product. Same happened to Costco. You were never able to find Kirtland signature from any place besides inside of Costco. Now, we're running a problem. That's why craft food stock value die plumped. Why? Reason being, they lost their brand identity. That's why I told you guys Amazon is criminal. They disrupt the traditional brand, disrupt the traditional business, but they're not making much money. And by not making money, they're able to monopoly the online e-commerce. That is a bad news. My, my personal opinion, that is a bad news. Somebody may have different opinion about Maybe Jeff Bezos say, what the hell you're talking about? But I'm telling you, that is not a good example of technology taking place to, to, to make money. But they're able to disrupt. I give that much credit to them. That will be later on. We talk, continue to talk about the online. Very soon we have online talk about. And if you, that is more for production, for consumer product, or even for B2B product. But there is opportunity called franchise. They are very popular in 70, 80, 90. Major successful uh, business model. Like download the world, Burger King the world, and you name it, Kentucky Fried Chicken, and Taco Bell, Del Taco, all these. It's called franchise. Wow. Can we as entrepreneurs still using franchise system to make money? The answer is yes. How? I am not an expert of franchise, but I will be talking about that later on, but still, this, someday we'll talk about franchise only. But licensing, licensing. Why do I use licensing? I've been talking about a lot. You don't have to license your technology your pattern, your innovation only to one company or only in one country or only in one category. I was able to make a pop-up play 10 to be pop-up play dog house. Children play 10, you reduce the motor for the, for the dog, for the pet, for the cats, for any animals at home to be play 10 for the pet. So I licensed my technology to a company called Sport Pet. Sport Pet is selling all the pop-up animal play 10 while I'm selling the play 10 play structure to the children. And also I licensed the uh, same technology, making big, gigantic hunting tent, camping tent. I licensed to other company take care of their business. So I license to multi different licensee. I even license technology to the pool float and to 
other uh, organizer hampers. So the pop-up hampers, you know who I am. You, you go to brianusing.com, you will see the pop-up hampers in the website. And it's talking about, uh, we can demonstrate to you how many licensee I have with one technology. Multiple licensing, licensee you can license to in, for multiple category and multiple country, multiple territory, and multiple application of your technology. That's called, that's why we call licensing. Licensing is boring, stupid. Licensing is the way to catch up today technology. Or you can even license to same product, different sales channel. The sales channel could be, could be online, could be brick and mortar, could be using distributors. I have a student called Mike with. He actually licensed his cheese shaper, cheese shaper to the company making TV promotion, whatever. He got a, got a good contract, but at the same time, he still have a room to license his technology through company like Cisco, the food distributor, and making all these products to utilize the food distributor to make second income instead of only one channel of income or one source of income with license, then he actually has a pro opportunity to do slicing. So that's what costs license. Now online, that's a tricky part because most of people still frustrated don't know how to run online. So I will talk about that later on. We'll give a five minutes break. Thank you everybody signing in for this, for supporting this webinar and online and some seminar online. So take a break, go to have a drink, have a, a, a take, take a chance to go to a bathroom. We're coming back in five minutes. Thank you. All right, we're back. Uh, we uh, have another uh, half an hour will be done. So I will be, right now I will speed up for the online. Online is very, very, very different than all this traditional manner. So I'm gonna do a little different way to describe the online and then I make the camera a little lower and then I can utilize the space to write down. For inventor, for uh, the uh, new entrepreneur or startup entrepreneur, there's a large way to make prototypes, proof of concept, to make prototype overseas, to even work with Alibaba in China, to do OEM through online, communication, to even do OBM, online communication. And then if we start with small quantity, we can afford 5,000 or 50,000 uh, per order, 50,000 pieces per each product. So we can even use AliExpress. AliExpress, some middlemen and some agents and some uh, other cyber distributors. Not to worry, as long as they manufacture certain quantity, what you know, without massive investment, they are more involved, ODM, OEM, let them do it. Let them do that for you. When you go to big volume, you can move from AliExpress to Alibaba. The AliExpress people may even a part of an Alibaba factory and running small quantity and try to catch up more 
cells. That's online. So make sure the online business we have These two are very popular. Obviously, there's a made in China.com. There is a China made in China 6.0, whatever. There's a lot of online website you can search Chinese manufacturer. This is only two I'm talking about. Take advantage, do it. They will do OEM, they can even do white label, they can even do private label for you. So this, use this to search them. Now that's called sourcing. This is online sourcing. We're not talking about Fulfillment. They do little fulfillments. Some factory here, they do fulfillments. They even ship to your customers or they take care of shipping ocean free to your US warehouse. Have some tea. Uh, that's called sourcing. Online sourcing. Then we talk about online sales. Online sales, rather important. Whether you use Amazon, whether you use You use a Shopify to build your store. The technology is available. There's a lot of proof of success. The technology is running very smooth. Amazon Solar Central, Amazon Vendor Central. If you guys have time, learn about Amazon. Solar Central, learn about Amazon, Vendor Central. I, we as a have several company, I own also ven uh, in the Vendor Central of Amazon and in the Solar Central of Amazon. And I also use Shopify to build some stores. I experience now, I do not want to use them anymore. I use Duda. Duda is a lot more easy to build. They, they easy to build, they very easy to build a website, whatever. Amazon also very very useful with a charging system whatever but when you build a nice website you need to pay for a lot of different apps those app costs too much money especially when you uh, launch a startup so after you do the sales who the hell promoting your product without promotion how people can promote you so therefore it's a promotion online promotional online uh, so when you do this uh, online store sell your invention sell your product sell your service sell your design sell your software sell your product sell you the greatest invention in the world so what nobody know nobody know you do not ever believe you make a one damn online store and then you can start your business that's a fool of shit, nobody believing it, and you shouldn't be believing that. And we need to find out who's promoting it. So now there's a there's an Instagram, there's a Facebook, there's a YouTube. This only this only these three social media works the best. The rest of it is nonsense, not to waste of time. YouTube, you do YouTube app, and then Instagram, you do Instagram, Facebook app, it's okay. I mean it depends on what product. And, uh, and more and more older people stay in, the young generation's gone, 
from Facebook. You knew that, I knew that. Uh, I'm not here to bad mouthing anybody, but still, people should know the trend. Um, even uh, now, so if that is the case in the Instagram, there's a huge social media influencer. They are fucking idiots. In a way, they're very creative. They are very uh, much uh, going on with their um, uh, uh, followers. But they don't know how to run business. Use them to promote your product, your service, your, your store. Not everybody like Kylie Jenner with the mother Chris Jenner driving the daughters run their business with their influencer and uh, with the Kardashian uh, a, 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 a live show or reality show to drive the, the family being well known. Not everybody can do that. So therefore, most of inf uh, influencers, they are very much EQ savvy, performance savvy, and then they, but they're maybe a lot of the art, they are introverts. They don't even like to talk. They don't even know how to deal with people managing business. So work with them. As an entrepreneur, we, should, we can take advantage. Work with them. I have a company called MacCross, MacCross.com, MacCrosspartner.com, MacCrossStore.com. So go to MacCross, take a look what MacCross can do for you. I am just building this product, this platform to, get, to, to allow online seller and the social media influencer to get engaged together to run business. I'm running, I'm running to a situation, the influencers are, 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 are very uh, temperament, they are very uh, artistic, uh, but they are not really understand what is the need and what type of discipline they need to be in business to support the business to run their income because this engagement with Macross allow them to make 20% just by promoting the store, promoting the product. Macross take 10% and then the seller running the Macross store who have to prepare inventory, invest money to build the site, to build inventory, to work with the supplier, all these take 70%. So that's how Macross set up right now. And but I've been experiencing some uh difficulty to uh to work with the influencer in terms of business. Also, I run into a diff uh, little uh difficulty for the seller to understand how difficult the influencer is to promote product because if you overly promote product, you may drive out the followers. But that's besides the point. Eventually, we're going to talk. We're going to talk about map cross business as a subject, as a, a a a seminar to talk about. Now, so promotion. Marketing and promotion. Woo! If you don't have a marketing promotion, don't run, the, don't run the online business. Don't even design a store. No need to design store because if you don't know how to drive the traffic into your store, stop. Don't even bother. If you drive the wrong traffic to your store, stop. Don't even run it. But Online sourcing can really work on this. After you source out, you can still work, sell, distribute the product in the market. Doesn't matter, it's online, and doesn't matter, it's a brick and mortar. Now that is how online, online is very funny. Online is very easy. Low income, uh, no, low, uh, how, how, how do I just call it? Uh, <laughs> words are just in my mouth. It's, uh, it's easier to cross over, overcome 
the curve. But it's difficult to market. Unlike it's difficult to sell into Walmart Target, but if you sell into it, Walmart Target will take care of their own sales. So that's why uh, the, 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 the hub uh, is a little difficult to go across the hurdle to sell to Walmart and Target. But Walmart Target is suffering. Target already made the announcement to the stock market. They won't see their profit within next 10 years. So their stock market dived, stock value dived. Now, very soon, Disney no need to sell DVD via Walmart and via Target. They bought Hulu. They can use Hulu to distribute. To stream their product because most of their product are entertainment movie tv shows so they can use streaming technology to stream out distribute the technology they don't even need to rely on walmart target best buy anymore wow go figure not that easy the world changing so fast if you don't have innovative mindset and you don't have any new concept running the business then don't start the business even if you have a great invention you need innovation method to sell them so licensing is one of innovation method to do licensing why label is good to sell if you can find a what good white label manufacturer to do white label for you do it whether it's in us or in overseas private label you have been successful in retail environment to prove your success then you can do private label when you do private label to certain company, doesn't mean you don't run your own label. You still run your own label. Franchise is a difficult situation. Franchise and the influencer business, we we'll talk about individually. And license, we talked about before. Then eventually we can also talk about how much Licensing is the innovative method to overcome licensing, to make more income from multi different retail, a uh, multi different income based on one technology, one pattern, or multiple pattern, whatever, within same technology. Online, online we can have we can take advantage. But we also have to be careful how much we understand online. Building a website, building a online uh, business is not that difficult. Running it is executing it, making money is very challenging, ladies and gentlemen. So I hope entrepreneur, invention, different method of running business can help you guys all um, understand how the dynamic is. Very soon, I, I know I would like to have people to ask questions uh, with the seminar or maybe even ask questions in voice. <laughs> so I, I did find some technology or you guys can use, um, later on we can use a uh, Zoom uh, to communicate and also link together with uh, YouTube, if the bandwidth allow us to deal with.
How to invent? Although you guys are, some of you guys are a lot more better inventor than I am. But based on my experience, my invention not only talk about how to meet the market demand or meet the needs of the market, but also can we in, invent something, drive the needs of the market. That is innovative way of being inventor and running your invention that is what i would love to challenge everybody that's what i would like to talk about next week how to use innovation method to develop your invention so to this week so i i i see some let me blow up some of the um the the window oh shoot the window's gone okay here about how to read yours again um zoom's already working on that way to make a live chat so mark i need you to tell me how to run that thank you mark Okay, uh, Roy Liu, uh, Louis, Roy Louis is asking how uh, the LLC can save money, save tax. Um, it's very simple. When you spend any money related to your uh, invention or related to the business, uh, related your uh, related to any business with your invention, okay, you need to form an LLC. Every money you spend, you you put you put them as investment into your LLC. Let's let let's just say you invest five thousand dollars in your Roy Louis LLC. So Roy Louis LLC will run patent application, legal issue, set up a business, hire employee, or working with overseas to do samples. Uh, whatever is business need, even a piece of paper, toilet paper support your business, you can use that to do, to report, to file a tax return with the LLC, with your CPA to get tax deduction. And meanwhile, it's good, good to use LLC to protect yourself in case you regret your license in case you make a bad deal for license and then you can work around it to find a way to protect yourself or even withdraw your agreement if your lawyer is smart enough. <laughs> but during the battle, during the legal battle, you don't get your own yourself exposed to the business. Business is rather dangerous. People sue you, people do whatever. So that is why I'm saying it is good to use the LLC to protect yourself. All right, you're welcome, uh, Roy. I would like love to see you guys next week the same time to share information, to share my knowledge, to benefit your business, your invention, your entrepreneur. All right, Mark uh, Ariskin, I will talk to you later on to find out how Zoom and uh, YouTube works then next week. We can even see each other uh, from Zoom working with a live seminar. All right. Um, there's a lot of suggestions. Thank you very much, uh, Ryan, and thank you, uh, Mark. And 
Let's end today. Thank you very much. I hope this course is benefit uh, is um, helpful. Uh, Roy, I don't know. You're the Roy of previously in our uh, seminar before. If you are, say yes. <laughs> And Michelle, um, we'll see you, all right? Thank you very much. Have a good evening, everybody. And be successful in your business and in your adventure. Thank you.